Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Recently, Adobe updated Photoshop CC to version 21.2. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a couple significant features of this release, and I'm going to mention a few others. In the description below this video will be a link to Adobe's website where you could read about everything that's new in version 21.2. Now, I did want to mention a few things. First of all, uh, they've improved some things, or they've improved how it handles fonts. Uh, one new feature is that if you open up a document that has fonts that aren't activated, it will automatically activate those fonts for you, so you don't have to go to Adobe's website and activate the fonts. Another thing they've done with fonts is if you open up a document that has fonts that it can't find, meaning they're not Adobe fonts, they're fonts from a third party, it will try to find automatically a font that matches the, that font in question. So that is a nice new feature of um, version 21.2. Now another thing has to do with patterns. Personally, I don't use patterns, but if you do, you now have the ability to rotate a pattern. And what I'm talking about is if you go up to layer, new fill layer pattern. Uh, you click OK here, and you could see that it lays down the pattern. Well, what is new is this angle. So you now could rotate a pattern um, with this little angle tool right there. Now, what I do want to talk about are a couple things that I think are relatively uh, significant. First of all is select subject. You probably know that if you pick a selection tool in Photoshop by hitting the W key on your keyboard, at the very top you'll have this um, button select subject. In the past it always did a great job if your subject was isolated from the background. So if you had a person in front of a solid color background, it did a great job. But where it would have a problem is an image such as this where the background is pretty busy. Now if I click on select subject for this image, you'll see that eventually it gets a pretty good selection. Now it's not meant to get an exact selection, it's meant to get you close, and you can see it did pretty good. It didn't select all the camera, and it selected a little area between her hands, uh, which I don't think it should have selected uh, right there. So um, overall, if I go to Select and Mask, you can see it did a pretty good job. So that has been improved greatly, uh, this new uh, Select Subject feature. And again, you access that uh, when you uh, activate any selection tool. So if you hit the W key on your keyboard, and it doesn't matter if it's object selection, quick selection, or magic wand, you'll see select subject up there. Now, really the most significant change to this version has been what they've done with Adobe Camera Raw. Now I'm going to open a few raw files in Photoshop, and raw files will open automatically open up automatically into Adobe Camera Raw. And already you probably see it's cosmetically different. Now, Adobe Camera Raw always, use, always used the same process engine as Lightroom, but it cosmetically looked different. In this version of Adobe Camera Raw, this is Adobe Camera Raw version 13, they've made it cosmetically more similar to Lightroom. As you could see as it opened up the images at the bottom, the images are in this film strip. You also could control where that film strip is. If you go over here on the far left, you'll see there's a little button here. And if I just click on it once, it will hide the film strip. Click on it again, it brings it back. If I long press with the left mouse button, I'll get a menu. And you could see I could put it vertically so it's on the left. Long press again and I could put it back to horizontal. Also, you could control what information is displayed in each of the thumbnails of the film strip. Just long press, and I could show the file name. So you can see the file names are there now. Long press again, and I could show the ratings and color labels as well. So that is a new feature, um, this film strip where you could manipulate it, put it where you want, and have control over what information is displayed. Now, Again, cosmetically, Adobe Camera Raw is totally different than what it used to be. It's um, laid out, as you can see, more like Lightroom. Uh, we have an edit panel at the very top right-hand corner. And you can see we have edit and we have uh, basic tab and curves. And with the recent update to Lightroom, and by the way, I did a video yesterday 
where I go over all the new features in Lightroom 9.3. I'll have that linked in the description below this video as well. You can see the curves is cosmetically identical to Lightroom. Um, there's the detail panel, color mixer, which is the HSL pad, uh, panel, uh, split toning, uh, optics for the lens, geometry, effects, and so on. Now, if you right click on any of these tabs over here, you could see I'm in a responsive panel mode. Um, what that means is that if I open up more than one, it will allow you to, but it will not, uh, it will minimize scrolling. So if I open up, let's say color mixer, it will close whatever it needs to close. So you don't have to scroll that much. So you could have more than one tab open but it will automatically close those so you don't have to scroll that much. That's what responsive is. If I right click on it and go to single panel mode, that means it will close panels so that only one panel is open at any time. And if I right click and go to uh, multi-panel mode, then I could open them all and I'd have to scroll. So you can see there's a lot of scrolling involved there. Personally, I think I like single panel mode. Also, if you right click, you probably notice you could expand them all or collapse them all as well. So cosmetically, it's more like Lightroom. Uh, over on the right are the tools. You know, in the past, everything was across the top. So we have the crop tool. We have the spot removal tool. We have the adjustment brush, graduated filter, radial filter. We have the red eye uh, removal tool. We have snapshots. So you can take a snapshot during your processing. Uh, then we have uh, the presets right here. They've also added those changes that were added to Lightroom 9.3 as far as presets were concerned, where it um, has this new default category of presets, and it allows you to do a, use adoptive ISO presets, which I talk about in a little more detail in that Lightroom video, and I'm not going to get into it here. But again, I encourage you to watch that Lightroom video. Uh, down here with these three little dots, if you click there, you can see a menu opens up and you could reset your image, uh, export uh, settings to an XMP and different uh, things there. Now, they've also added uh, the changes they did to local adjustments in the Lightroom version, Lightroom 9.3. They added a hue um, control. And they have have that here as well. So if I go to, let's say, color bar bars and I open up the um, adjustment brush, first of all, you can see how the adjustment brush is laid out. At the top are the brush attributes. And you're not seeing by default all the attributes. You have to click on this little uh, expose triangle to roll down everything. And you can see we could feather the brush flow, density, and auto mask, and so on. So I'm going to take feathering all the way down and we'll go to uh, just a specific color and I'll click there and hold the shift key down so I get a straight line and click there. And we drew a line, although you probably can't see it. I bring exposure down, you could see it. See how I drew that? Perfectly straight line. Now I'll reset that. Now what is new is this U bar down here. We could actually change the color and you could see that it changes the color to anything we want by just moving that hue bar around. Now there's a fine adjustment, so if you get close to a certain spot and you're just trying to fine tune it, you could click this little checkbox and then it takes a significant movement to make that hue bar move. A little shortcut for that is if you don't want to go down there and check that box, is hold the alter option key in while you click and drag the U bar. Alt if you have PC option, if you have a Mac, and you can see it temporarily will check that use fine adjustment box and allow you to fine tune in your hue. So that is a new uh, feature of the version 9.3 uh, 9 of Lightroom and of Adobe Camera Raw. Now this um, Adobe Camera Raw like uh, new kind of features and everything about it is also available not only with raw files but if you open up the adobe camera raw filter from within photoshop uh, for example uh, let me cancel out of here we'll go back 
to Photoshop and I have this image in Photoshop. So if I go up to Filter and then down to Camera Raw Filter, you'll see that it's the same exact layout. So uh, that is available as the filter and is the Adobe Camera Raw application for raw files. So to me, those are the two most significant um, things that are in this version of Photoshop that is the improved select subject. It works a lot better. And this new um, cosmetic layout of Adobe Camera Raw those new features to the U um, adjustment added to the local adjustment tools. And again, I go into greater detail uh, some of these features in that Lightroom video, which I'll have linked below. That's it. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>